hacking of Lockheed has highlighted the potential consequences of hackers gaining access to the sensitive national secrets that many defense contractors work on in tandem with the U.S. government. My next guest broke the story on the security breach at Lockheed Martin. Robert X. Cringely is a well-known Silicon Valley journalist who's covered the tech industry for 25 years. His blog is read by 500,000 people every week, and he's originally trained as a physicist and was the 12th employee at Apple. Bob, welcome to Bloomberg West. So first of all, great job breaking this story. What are your sources inside Lockheed telling you about how serious this really is? Well, I think it's serious enough that they've decided to replace all the secure ID tokens, 90,000 of them. That's uh, an admission that there is no security at all. Now, from our understanding, this is the first such hack at a defense contractor as big as Lockheed Martin. Uh, is there any uh, knowledge that you have that something like this could have happened before? Well, it relates back to the RSA uh, breach back in March and the information that whoever got from that attack was used in this one. So anytime between then and now, there could have been an attack somewhere else. And there's no reason to believe that there wasn't. You know, frankly, I don't think Lockheed was planning to issue a press release. So if uh, the story hadn't fallen in my lap, perhaps we never would have heard of it. Yeah, and yet, Bob, it seems like the, these weren't the only guys that were hacked. At least one of the other defense companies out there said that, that they had a similar attack using similar equipment. Yeah, there's, it, it's pretty clear the way that this was done and the way that, that the companies are responding ultimately to it is by replacing all their secure ID tokens. That's, that's the only real answer to the problem in the immediate sense. Although it also seems that replacing... The secure ID token is really you're just replacing the same level of security. Before you go to some kind of biometric security or something, it's putting the same tools for the hackers right out in front of them, daring them to try it again. Well, yes and no. Uh, in, in one sense, the RSA uh, hack from, uh, from March involved apparently the theft of a database that linked the secure ID uh, serial numbers to the seeds, the electronic seeds within each token. That is a database that only works for the, the current uh, you know, generation of tokens. So if you replace all those tokens, then you would have to get a whole new database. And now, you know, in one sense, it's, it, it's, I'm sorry. A lot of different companies like Lockheed work with outside companies like EMC and RSA to provide their security. Does that mean a lot of different companies are going to have to be reevaluating their security? <laughs> I would say all companies are reevaluating their security, yes constantly and especially now and and for for an rsa which is a division of emc it means replacing two and a half million secure id tokens and how about the the tokens themselves i mean obviously a number of corporations allow their employees to log on to their systems from outside of work is, is that process in itself by which people use these tokens is that now insecure well with those tokens it probably is or or rather they can't they can't know and so they can't take the chance that it is or isn't so they just have to get new tokens the problem here uh, is a security problem and a business problem the tokens are replaced on a three-year uh, cycle and so this means that RSA is going to have to replace them all right now and they're going to have to do it for free if I was Lockheed I would demand you know free tokens and and that means two and a half million tokens that that would have represented revenue to RSA that won't and then three years of, of cyclical revenue that won't happen. So it's a huge hit to them. Yeah, Bob, let me ask you about that in terms of cost. I mean, it seems like there's great cost to EMC, but also to companies throughout the world of everything, because everyone has to worry about this stuff now. Is that right? Yeah, they do. They do. And, and what they have to do is they have to take it a lot more seriously than they have. You know, there's, a, there's an element of, uh, to, to security uh, of bluster. You know, they're saying we do all this and we have, you know, best practices and we have things right. securely in place. But, but that RSA database that was stolen, for example, isn't supposed to exist. So, right, they, you right. know, they, they, they were, there was lax behavior that allowed it to exist and then to be stolen. 
Yeah, I'm also struck by, and I don't, I can't tell if this is greater activity by hackers or greater attention to what hackers are doing. But I was struck by, you know, you do some work with PBS. Uh, apparently, they made Tupac, the hackers made Tupac come back alive. I mean, I, you know, this this hacking of the PBS website, putting up a, a bogus story that said Tupac Shakur is alive and well in New Zealand, insane, maybe hilarious, but also shows this sort of increased power and prevalence of hackers in our in our world. Yeah, this is the difference between you know a, a prank and a crime, and and certainly in the case of of uh, PBS, it was um, you know an immature act of revenge on the part of immature hackers. Uh, the RSA thing, for the most part, is most likely actually a, a sort of a nation thing. There's probably a national government somewhere that's behind it. Bob, when you look out across the cyber battlefield, you have companies like PBS even getting hacked. How bad do you think it's going to get? Well, it depends upon what your definition of bad is. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I live on the net, and my expectation is that at any moment I could, uh, you know, be defaced. And, and my readers, you know, wouldn't be surprised if that happened. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. And I would just say, well, you know, sorry. But on the other hand, I'm not harboring uh, national secrets. You know, I don't have any, any defense information. Uh, so I'm not defending our country here. And, and so, you know, right. there are different levels of concern. All right, it certainly is a rapidly changing cyber battlefield and very, very sensitive information out there. Bob Cringely, thanks so much for jo joining us. Great job breaking that story.